Hello everyone, this is Attack the Backlog, the podcast where I, Mark Hirschnez, tries to make a dent in their backlog one game at a time. This is episode 17, Valiant Hearts The Great War. Valiant Hearts is a puzzle adventure game that takes place during World War I, and it begins in 1914 as the Austro-Hungarian Empire declares war on Serbia following the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, and ends just as the United States officially enters the war. And in this game, you play as four different characters, Emil, Carl, Freddy, and Anna. And over the course of the game, you play as these four different characters who all have their specific objectives. Anna is a nurse and the rest are soldiers. And you'll deal with being caught and having to escape from a POW camp or chasing after Anna's father who is an engineer and has been kidnapped and you'll have the characters at times interacting with each other or being separate and of course there is a dog whose name is non-existent I'm not sure if the dog has a name but the dog will interact with all of the characters at some point you can pet the dog if that is important to you and at its heart it's a simple puzzle adventure game where you have an objective and you need to complete said objective by collecting items in the environment. This means that you may have to get an item from a certain person, but in order to get that item, you have to go find them something, and then you find that in the world and then bring that back to them to get that item, which you use for something else. For instance, there was a soldier who had ink, which my character, I believe it was Emil at the time, needed to write a letter to his daughter. And in order to get this ink, he had to find a sock for this soldier. And how you go about finding this sock is, first you find a really, really dirty sock on, I think, a corpse. I'm not sure if it was on a corpse or if it was just in the ground somewhere, but you find a dirty sock. However, this guy wants a clean, crisp sock. So in order to clean it, you have to go to the kitchen where there's a big barrel full of water for washing dishes. If you try to put the sock in the water when the two cooks are looking, they'll be like, no, 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 no. This is for cleaning dishes, not for cleaning dirty, stanky ass socks. So get that shit out of here. They don't say that, but you know it's what they're thinking. So in order to clean the sock, you have to wait until they're both looking away. You drop the sock in the water and then while they're cleaning the dishes, it'll get stuck to one dish and then you can go and snatch it. And then you can take that clean crisp sock and take it to that soldier and get that ink for your letter. But wait, there's more. If you take the sock to him like that, he'll be like, okay, it's clean, but it is soaking wet. What am I gonna do with this sock? This is not what I asked for. I asked for a clean, dry sock. Get your shit together, buddy. So what you do then is just walk over a few steps to a furnace, put the sock on top of it for a few seconds, and then pick it back up, and you're good to go. So a lot of Valiant Hearts involves puzzles of that like. But before I get to the rest of the game, I do want to talk about the thing I love most about the game, and that is the art. Valiant Hearts is a beautiful game. I love it to pieces. From a technical standpoint, it is beautiful, and from an aesthetic standpoint, I just am in love with the art style. At no point did I get tired of looking at the game. It looks beautiful on a big screen. You might think that it's a game better suited for a handheld or a smaller screen, but it looks fantastic on a big screen. It is a gorgeous game, though there are times where they zoom in on characters, and it's clear that the art hasn't been up or anything, so it gets very fuzzy. That is the only time when the art is compromised or looks not bad per se. It just is a bit jarring to see the art so close up and all fuzzy like that. But it is an unbelievably beautiful game so now that i got that out of the way let me get back to the game though i just want to say one last thing if you don't like the art of valiant hearts there is something wrong with you you have no heart if you don't like valiant hearts you have no heart you have no heart you hear me no heart anywho so in addition to the traditional puzzle adventure game mechanics of finding items and then using them with this or that to get new items to progress. There are also stealth elements, timing based healing mechanics where you are pressing buttons in correlation with a spike in their lifeline or whatever that is going across on a bandage, which is by far the worst part of the game and at no point did I enjoy that. And then my absolute favorite part of the game, something that was 
rare. I think it only happened three, maybe four times. There are these rhythm based car chases. Rhythm based is not accurate. You're not moving to the beat of a drum or what have you. But the action on screen and the music playing, which is always classical music, complement each other. So whether they're playing Flight of the Bumblebee or Hungarian Dance Number no. 5 or the French Can Can, the bombs that are dropping from the sky, the mortars and, and whatnot are dropping in unison with the song and the notes that are being played. Not always is this the case, but for a good chunk of these car chases, that is happening. It lightens the mood a bit and makes for a nice breath of fresh air in between all of the puzzly elements and the heaviness of the story. Because the, the story of Valiant Hearts is very heavy and it's, it's a good story. The personal stories being told in Valiant Hearts are compelling and engaging and kept me wanting to see how they were going to play out. The overarching story of the war itself is delivered contextually and also through short paragraphs about specific topics or things that were going on during the war, which you can read, but you're not going to get a lot of history from this game. You can dip your toes in the history of World War One, but if you want a more extensive look at it of course you're going to have to look elsewhere whether that's in books or documentaries etc and that that's fine i wasn't expecting that from the game but the little bit of information that they do sprinkle throughout each chapter is enough to pique one's interest if they are inclined to maybe learn more themselves but the personal stories being told kept me invested in the game itself when i wasn't enjoying the gameplay stuff so because the gameplay which i talked about earlier is very traditional and not that hard none of the puzzles are very difficult or clever a lot of them can be tedious where you're just going back and forth between the same area because this person wants this thing and you know it's over here but you can only carry one item at a time which i didn't mention earlier but that is a bit of a frustrating element the dog can carry something too if he is with you at that time but a lot of puzzles do involve this back and forth tedious action which can be not frustrating just tedious there's, there's no better word to say than tedious but the story was strong enough to keep me pushing forward when i was getting a little tired of the same old same old that it was delivering and each of these characters personal stories end up intertwined with one another because emil is carl's father-in-law and they both get drafted into different sides of the the war carl is german so he gets drafted to the german army and emile is french and he gets drafted to the french army and then you have the american soldier freddy and then the belgian nurse anna and emile and freddy end up teaming up a lot and they grow this kinship which is great to see play out and see how they have this affection for each other and makes the ending that much sadder when Freddy takes his hat off for the first time in the game as Emil is walking to be put to death for killing an officer who he killed because the officer was sending in troop after troop after troop into the line of fire watching them die and after a while Emil just couldn't take it anymore and so he acted without thinking and wasn't intending to kill this officer but in the heat of the moment he didn't know his own strengths i guess and he ended up killing him and you have carl who is wanting to get back to his wife and son and anna who is trying to rescue her father who has been kidnapped and watching their personal stories play out being a part of them and having the dog too who is along for the ride and seeing his own little personal story which gets its own little small segment where you meet his owner and things don't turn out so well and this reunion is a short-lived one and it's just pretty sad but i i really enjoyed the way the stories were handled and through playing the game you could see that the writers respected world war one it wasn't just hey let's make a world war one game to make a world war one game the, the the treatment of the story both the personal story and the the bits of the grand story that you get are, are all handled very well and you get a lot of the story 
told through a narrator who is fantastic. And when I looked him up, I was surprised to find out he hasn't narrated a whole bunch of stuff because he sounds like someone who has just narrated so much. His voice is perfect for it and he sounds so good. But then I found out he played Hercules in Dragon Ball Z, among other characters, and it kind of blew my mind. But he is fantastic in the game and the voice acting as a whole is really good there's very little of it you have the narrator and then sort of a simlish type of talk that is mumbly and may not always be full words i'm not sure but then at the very end you have emil reading the last letter he wrote to his daughter which is read beautifully and i i really enjoy the story the game itself isn't the most engaging or exciting or brain busting or anything along those lines it's a very straightforward puzzle game with basic puzzles there there is a hint system you can utilize which is very forgiving and doesn't take away from the experience though i doubt you will ever need to use it but it is there if you need it so with all that said i really enjoyed the game i do wish there was a bit more to the gameplay because i did find myself getting a bit tired of it during longer play sessions there are collectibles you can find that also provide you with some information and you have a chapter select so you can go back that way you don't have to replay it for collectibles if that's your jam but it's a very well put together game it's beautiful it has a fantastic score throughout the entire game not just those car chase sequences and like i said the story is very good and very well told and it ends on a note that leaves the game open for a sequel though i don't know if we'll ever get one i do believe the developer is working on another game set in world war one but it is not a sequel to valiant hearts but i could be wrong but i really like this game overall and i am happy i got around to playing it so if it's in your backlog maybe you should put it up a few spots and get around to it sooner than later because it is a good time it can't be a sad time but it's a good time and a sad time and a good time it's a good sad time and a sad good time i don't know what that means but that doesn't matter again that is valiant hearts which is available on a bunch of platforms ps3 ps4 xbox 360 xbox one the switch and pc anyway that will do it for this here episode of attack the backlog once again i am your host mark Nez. y'all can find me on twitter and pretty much everywhere at px sauces the site is of course pixelatedsausage.com where you can find this podcast and the pixelated sausage podcast which are both available on podcast services across the globe like stitcher radio google play apple Podcasts, and spotify and if you'd like to check out the video version of this year's show or the pixelated sausage podcast you can go over to youtube.com slash pixelated sausage if you'd like to check out the art i make you can go over to pxsart.com and check it all out over there if you see something you like click the link and it'll take you to where you can purchase a print of the piece you fancy and if you fancy the site in general and anything we do please go over to patreon.com slash pxs and support us that way and as always thank you for watching or listening i hope you enjoyed this here episode and i hope you have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day we must strive to cherish their memory Never forget.